Let us pray. Gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up, he saw a large crowd coming toward him. Jesus said to Philip, Where are we going to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to him, test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get just a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are these among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up from the fragments of the five barley loaves, left by those who had eaten. They filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. Now it was dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. We are reaching the end of the month of July. Things are moving so very quickly. I don't know about you, but uh, summer has kind of flown by. Hopefully you've been able to do some things and enjoy yourself, as well as perhaps you've also done some things just to rest and take care of yourself. You know, whether we cut the grass today or tomorrow, it will continue growing. It doesn't know any better. It will continue getting taller. And curiously enough, when God takes us home, the grass will still be there. It will not weep over our passing. Um, I think it's always good to keep things in perspective. I think it's nice to have a nice yard and a nice garden for your sake and for the sake of the community. But don't become obsessed with it. It's just not worth it. There are other things to be obsessed with. Like the scripture we have today, which as you have heard now, is really three stories. It's the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000, at least according to the, uh, John the Evangelist. This is, we've moved on from Mark to John. It's also a very short story of how the people come and uh, after they've fed, want to make Jesus their king. It's only one verse in this gospel reading. And then, of course, it's the story of Jesus walking on the water, which by all of these stories by themselves... Uh, is we're, are worthy of a sermon. And uh, perhaps at another time, in another place, uh, I'll read the scripture differently and I'll preach differently because it's got a lot to say to us. I guess I'd like to spend some time with the, the feeding of the 5,000 because I think that's a story that uh, not only appears in all of the Gospels, but one that's kind of central to our understanding of Jesus. Much as we understand him as... Uh, the Good Shepherd, we also understand him as someone who can multiply bread and feed people who are hungry. He's a multiplier, isn't he? He's someone that can take what is a little and make a lot out of it. You know, he is literally 
someone who embodies this idea of a mustard seed, which starts out small but gets big. You know, Jesus is able to take a boy's lunch, which we really don't understand how that happens. The Gospel of John is the only one that tells us that a little boy, a small boy, has five loaves and two fish. And it's kind of said almost as a joke, um, I think. You know, uh, Andrew says, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? As if to say, Lord, this is impossible. We have somebody here that has a, I don't know, a, a, a lunchable. He has a lunchable here. And, you know, but what is that among so many people? And Jesus says, bring me the lunchable. You know, bring me the five loaves and the two fish. I'll show you. I'll show you how God and God's word and the power of God's kingdom can multiply things. And so Jesus blesses it and distributes it. And afterwards, when they pick up the leftovers, as they should, because we don't want a bread lying around in a field, it's probably not a good thing. They find they have 12 baskets full of leftovers. I think this is a remarkable story in the gospel for a variety of reasons. And the continuing message of this gospel, this portion of the gospel, is that Jesus can multiply what we have. If you have a Lunchable, Jesus can feed 5,000 or more people with that Lunchable. If you have a small talent or ability, if you have a small financial gift, a donation of some part, Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, as a sign of the kingdom, can multiply that. And that's why when churches begin to say to themselves, we don't have enough pastor, we don't have enough people, we don't have enough money, we don't have enough time, we don't have a facility that can accommodate people. We have so little. And congregations tend to do that. And people do that. We say that about ourselves. If we had only, if we had only gone to college, if we had only gone to a better college, if we had only studied harder, if we had only gotten a better job, if we had only married better, if we had only taken the medicines that we were supposed to, if we had only listened to people when they talked to us, we could do something. We could be something. Whatever you are, and whatever you have is enough to do whatever God would have you do. Say it another way. You don't need a lot to follow in the path of Christ. Whatever you have, however you use it, it will serve God and God will multiply it. What a wonderful thing that is to know. You always have enough. If you're willing to share it, wonderful things can happen. That is the message of the church, and a message we continually need to hear. Because we live in a world where we believe a lot is a lot, and a little is a little. If you don't have a lot, well, what's the point? What's the point? If you're not beautiful, if you're not talented, if you're not noble, if you're not rich, if you're not good-looking, what's the point? Well, the point is, whatever we give to God, God can multiply. God can do something wonderful with whatever we give, whatever we share. That, I think, is a wonderful message. Please share it with others. Please know that whatever you have and however you use it, if you give it to Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, God will do something wonderful with it. Maybe not immediately. I mean, one of the wonderful things of this story is that Jesus feeds people with very little, with five loaves and two fish, and it's immediate. It's immediate. Maybe, maybe it'll take a few years. Maybe it'll take five years or 20 years. Maybe you share something small, and maybe 20 years from now, someone says, you know what? What you shared made a difference in my life. It changed how I looked at myself, how I was going to live my life. You made a difference in my life 20 years after the fact, 50 years after. This is a central theme of, of the gospel. Let us share what we have, and let us believe we have enough. Because if everyone shares, certainly we have enough. God will bless whatever we do, if we're willing to do it. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those 
who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.